So if you understood all of that, you should be fine, right? Well, there's just somebody that asked me to record it, and I forgot to record that one, so. Too bad they, I don't always do what I say I'm going to do. If you're doing this, um, is the problem that find the least amount of lumber? Like we're thinking, we're thinking it's plywood. We're thinking two-dimensionally here, right? And that's maybe not obvious, but if you're making an open top box and all you're thinking is you're slapping a bunch of plywood together, so it might not be a very uh, strong box once you're done, but uh, it has a square base and a capacity. What does this mean? Volume, right? So you got the volume equals 32 meters cubed, and it's got a square base. That's pretty important. So if you're drawing this thing, you have... Well, we'll do that, and we have that, I guess. Oh, that one's off a bit. We need it to be perfect. I don't know what this, I mean, I've made, I've made it so it's taller than it is wide, but who knows what it is, right? If you're talking about it, so the base is a square, so this is the same length as that. Or on the top here, all of these are the same length, right? Those are all the same. If you want to start with a bunch of different variables, you can say this is H. You can call the bottom X or whatever you want to call it. It's the same both ways there, right? You should start with some kind of formula relating everything. We have V equals volume of the box. X equals side length of the base. Really, if we're doing this properly, we should, you know, identify what all these are. And then we start writing some formulas or equations that relate everything. What do we know about the volume here of this thing? Yeah, x times x times h, x squared times h, right? We have too many variables here. We need to eliminate something. So you can eliminate something by thinking about how these are related here. What's our, uh, are, are all of these variables, by the way? The volumes, uh, like this is, this is a known quantity here. This is 32, right? If that's 32, then we got 32 equals x squared h. Which is the thing we're actually, now that I think about it, which is the thing we're actually uh, trying to maximize or minimize? Yeah, the surface area, right? We want to know... All the plywood or whatever you're making this out of on the sides, that's the thing you want to find the minimum of, right? Minimum surface area. Yeah, so we need it. We need something else. This is what we're going to use. That relates X and H, but it doesn't include the thing that we want to minimize here. So you could use A for surface area. And then, so we got something relating those two. We've actually, this is not a variable anymore, so how many variables do we have still? We have A, we have X, and we have H. Yeah, if the top is open, though, if it's an open top box. Yeah, so we just have, we have X squared for the base plus 4XH, right? Where this is... We have base, and we have the sides. Then you need to use this thing to eliminate a variable there because you have too many variables, right? You have, you have the thing you want to work with, and you want to write it in terms of only one other variable, but you have two here, right? If you're trying to decide which one to eliminate, it might make more sense to eliminate H since X appears more than once, but you could do it the other way. It just in terms of, it, you'll write it in terms of H or you'll write it in terms of X. You'll get the same answer either way, but your function's going to look different. I am going to choose to eliminate H. So I'm going to write this one, this, uh, this way they're related here. I'm going to write that as H equals 32 over X squared. So that's how the two are related to each other. And then you're going to, you're going to put this in right there. Okay. Should have highlighted that and not this, right? And 
So when you do that, make my brackets look a little better. 32 over x squared. You can simplify it. x squared plus that simplifies to, what does that simplify to? 128 over x. This is the function you want to find the maximum or the minimum of, right? Find minimum. To find the minimum of that, you know, you use calculus. So you find the derivative, find where it's zero or undefined. So we got to look at a prime of that. You can write this as a function of x. You can say a of x, and we want a prime of x if you like to use function notation, but you don't have to. The derivative of that is 2x plus yeah, plus negative 128 over x squared. If you want to write that, you could write this function as using powers if you want to see the power rule x squared plus 128x to the negative 1. This part of it's all just remembering all your power rules and everything, right? But we want to know now, we want to know where is this 0 or undefined, right? That's where we're going to find the, that's the calculus concept here is find where it's 0 or undefined. Whoa, that was fast. Didn't even move that. If you solve this, you know, move that, move this whole term over and, and so on. I'm sure you can come up with the solution to that. When you get an answer, it's po always possible you'll get a, you'll get something that doesn't actually make sense in the original situation. I don't know if this is a case like that or not. Can't remember off the top of my head. Hundred and twenty eight, might as well finish it, I guess, at this point. Two X. 128 equals 2x, what was that squared over there? I'm not missing something here. And so I got x cubed equals 64. x is, if it's cubed, there's no plus or minus, right? Just 4. This should correspond to anywhere, you know, anywhere on there that, means anything uh, in terms of max and min. Is there a place where it's undefined? Because this is where it's zero. That's where it's zero. Where is it undefined? It's, yeah, it's undefined when x equals zero, right? Technically, I mean, you can think in terms of what that means, right? If you made the width of the bottom zero, what would that mean for this box? It wouldn't really be a box. It would be you know, it'd be a box where the base is zero. That's obviously the minimum the volume could be, right? This this is not involved in our situation, right? Volume equals, whoops, sorry. Um, I guess the height is infinitely tall, right? The uh, the base is zero. Does that mean anything? Doesn't mean anything, right? There's no, like if the volume has to be a certain thing, it doesn't work in the situation. You kind of have to reject that. This is This is the one you're going to be looking for. Make a graph of it and look, though, okay? See what the graph looks like on your calculator or on, you know, computer or whatever. If you're... Okay, so what do we want here? We want to graph the original function, right? x squared plus, what was it, 32 over x? Am I right there? What was it? x squared over 32x? You're going to make me go back and look? 128 over x? x squared plus 128 over x. 128 over x. What should be our window in this situation? What makes sense here? Well, 8 is from the previous thing, but can you make it more than... I mean, you don't want to go less than 0. Who knows what's going to happen as you as you flatten the thing out as you make the as you make the this wider and wider. Let's we we kind of suspect this is four obviously, so we'll do this. And then what's our y value here? It's the area. We probably only we don't need negative areas here. What what's our area? Do you think? Who knows? 
50 works. Go by tens. Look at the graph of the thing. That doesn't work. Oh, we need above. We need to go above that course because we're looking at minimum. I was thinking we're looking at maximum. It's going to be asymptotic at the as you get towards the zero here, right? Because the volume's fixed, so the thing has to get taller and taller and taller. It's got to be infinitely tall as soon as you collapse that down to zero, the the um, width of the base. But you can go and do your maximum thing here and find this, and we have to stop. <laughs> I'm sure you can do it, right?